As a multi-passionate person, I have always dreaded the idea of being stuck in a box. As we get further and further into our education, we are forced to narrow down those choices on what we want to do. GCSEs, A-levels, when you get to uni, you have to pick a degree and it's, at least in this country, it's one course, it's one topic. How the hell they can expect us to know when we're teenagers? Because I'm in my 30s and I'm still not sure even now. <laughs> I really feel for multi-passionate young people because the thought of uni scared the absolute shit out of me because I had no idea what I wanted to do. Who does at 18? The problem is, when we get to adulthood, if we still haven't decided what that one thing is that we want to do for the rest of our lives, we face a lot of disapproval and we're accused of being scattered, unfocused and flaky. Society expects us to choose one thing and become really good at that one thing and we're judged on how successful we are by how our job sounds and how successful it sounds or how far you can climb up the ladder in your particular career path. So because of this societal norm, if you're multi-passionate, then you can quite often become stuck. We feel pressured to follow just one thing and scared to pursue the rest. And if you are multi-passionate, that can feel very restrictive very boring and be the worst kind of life imaginable. Us multi passionates are lifelong learners. We enjoy the thrill of learning something new. We're curious. We don't just want to settle for just one thing. We want to get out of our comfort zone. We want to try new things. We want to have a lot of fun, but we're just misunderstood and not taken seriously. We as multi-passionate people should be free to just be ourselves and push past the limitations that society poses on us, okay? We're not made to be boxed in. So what if I told you you don't have to choose and you can thrive as a multi-passionate creative and pursue all your passions and still be successful and just as successful, or if not more successful than Sally from school who knew what she wanted to do for the rest of her life when she was 10 years old. You'd feel pretty good, right? I feel like I'm so multi-dimensional that it would be a disservice to myself to not allow all parts of me to shine through. Do you get what I mean? So recently I have been allowing myself to be more creative and make time for everything in my life that interests me without feeling guilty about it. Something that has really been helping me is, let me get it, is this book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I'm going to do a whole like another video about this. But before I make those videos, I have some other tips to help out my fellow multi-passionate friends. Tip number one, write your ideas down. <laughs> I feel so overwhelmed on a constant daily basis. I have so many ideas buzzing around my head to the point where it becomes too much. And I'm like, I can't cope with my brain. And I end up just shutting down and putting my hoodie on or put getting under a blanket having a cup of tea and literally wasting i feel like i waste so much time and that's not good especially as a multi-passionate person because you want to feel like you're utilizing all of your hours every minute of the day like trying to fit in everything that you want to fit in so getting my ideas and just thoughts like literally anything out of my head onto paper I'm finding really helpful. I've got a dedicated little, like, just like a, what are they called? Moleskin, one of them, um, that's got creative journal on the front and anything to do with my creative ideas or like a business I might want to start goes in the journal. And then I can, sometimes I even forget what I've written in it. And it's great to then go back and be like, oh yeah, I was thinking about doing that. Like, like this video, if you relate to the point where you have so many good ideas you cannot keep up with them which is obviously is such a good thing but yeah write them down because then that also allows space for new ideas to come into your head it also really helps with noticing like reoccurring ideas like i know for a fact so many of my notebooks are filled with starting a youtube channel when you notice those reoccurring themes that's telling you something and that's telling you that that idea or thought is not one that you should ignore number two create priorities slash learn how to manage your time. Once you've written those ideas down, refer back and think, what am I most drawn to? Prioritize things you're most drawn to and things that are 
possible for you to undertake like in the here and now. Don't take on a massive project or give yourself a tight deadline on something if you work like 12 hour days, you know, that's not possible. And then you're not then gonna achieve that goal. And because you're not achieving it, you're gonna feel even more bummed out that you're not achieving your creative goals. Narrow your focus, pick one or two things each month, for example, if you've got like a, literally a list as long as your arm of things you wanna try, things you wanna do, pick two things to try this month, pick two things to try next month. It is a case, and I do struggle with this, I'm not very good at time management. I appear that I am, but really I'm not. When it comes to my own life and my own things, I'm really not, which is something that I've started to realize. So yeah, needs work. Number three, make time for things that you love without feeling guilty about it. By saying that you don't have time for something is more or less saying, I don't wanna do it. You're not honoring your creativity by not exploring it, you know? Your inner child artist, reference, pick up this book, I'm telling you, your inner child artist is craving for you to pick up those paints or for you to pick up that sketchbook or for you to get your pottery wheel out. Like they're literally screaming at you, like <laughs> let me out essentially, like give stuff a go and honestly just make the, make the time. Even if it is just 10 minutes, if all you really have got is 10 minutes, like that's a really good way to practice your creativity um, because you can't be precious over it either. It's just like, yeah, we're just playing, we're not being perfectionists. We're just getting our, just exercising our creative muscle. It's important to try and create like some kind of a routine or some kind of a plan. You know, obviously that's quite loose. It can change, like don't restrict yourself, but work at those things as much as you can and give yourself grace whilst you do them. If you're multi-passionate, number four is you just got to trust the process. If you're multi-passionate, some things aren't going to make sense. They are just not. But every little thing that piques your interest is for a reason. They might not seem like they're linked at all. You know, you might want to go ride a horse, but you also might want to learn to play guitar. Like, no, they sound like they're not linked at all unless you want to be a guitar playing horse rider. Like, there's a niche. But it's important to stay open-minded and follow these curiosities. Stay curious is a massive part of what I'm trying to push on this channel because everything will lead you to where you're meant to be. Even if you try something and you don't like it, that is a good thing because that is something that you can just cast away now. You've you've written it down, you've got it on the paper, you've come back to it and thought, I'm gonna try that this month and you don't like it, it didn't turn out how you imagined, that's fine. Everything will make sense one day and you can, it might not now, but you can look back two, three, five years down the line and look back at your life and think, that's why something happened or that's why I am now here because of X, Y, Z or I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't have tried that hobby, if I hadn't explored that interest. It would all make sense, I'm certain. Something that I do think is important to remember and it's also something that I'm trying to wrap my head around is that you don't have to monetize all of your passions. Now, for somebody who wants to make money off of what she enjoys and wants to make money off of her creativity, that's difficult because I feel like, well, if there's a money-making opportunity there and I'm gonna enjoy the process, like that is key. Like don't go trying to make money out of something that you have no real passion for because it will fail. But I wanna try and do it. <laughs> So if you feel like you can do it, by all means, but it's important that we don't spread ourselves too thin. And like I say, like I'm giving this advice, but I'm also, this is things that I'm learning at the same time. One of the reasons why I wanna create this channel and share my journey is so I can share things as I'm learning them because there are gonna be so many people that are in the same position as me that feel the same as me, that feel the same as you. We're a little bit sick of the nine to five. We're a little bit sick of the norm. We're a bit fed up with what society expects us to do. We wanna break the mold and we wanna try and have a bit of an outside of the box career, a bit, bit unconventional. 
And with the online opportunity being so massive in this day and age, you know, it seems silly for us not to like strive. Do you know what I mean? So it is important to set boundaries and it's important to not try and do everything all at once. This is what I tell myself, Lucy, you can do all of the things, just not all at the same time. It's normal for a multi-passionate person to spend most of their life hopping from one lily pad to the next. We're all like little frogs, hopping from one lily pad to the next, trying out different things. So what if you end up having three, four, five different jobs in your lifetime? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares what your friends think? Who cares what your family think? When you go to these family gatherings and they're like, oh, she's changed job three times in the last two years. Who cares, Aunt Sue? Who cares? You know in yourself that it's not because you're not sure what you wanna do. It's because you're collecting pieces of the puzzle, your very own personal puzzle, and you're looking for a way to piece it all together. That's why you're job hopping. That's why you've got a different hobby every week. Like, we're not, we're not indecisive. We're not flaky. We're just curious. We're curious. We're curious about life. We're curious about the world. And if you're not, Aunt Sue, then you want to take a good look at yourself, mate, because just saying, there's, there's a lot out there to be explored. There's so much out there and us multi-passionate people know it. Being multi-passionate is not wrong and it's not something that needs to be fixed. It's a specific trait of your character. It's how you work and that's what makes you different and it's what makes you unique. So begin to own the fact that you're multi-passionate, that you're a multi-potentialite, leverage it leverage it in every aspect that you can because you were not born to become normal you were born to become yourself just think of all of the potential of your potential that you would be killing off if you just succumbed to society and thought well actually it's not normal it's not right it's against the grain for me to have all these passions i'm just gonna learn to be a dentist imagine how miserable you'd be if you conformed and was living for somebody else, was living for somebody else's dream. Having several passions shouldn't be a thing to hide. It's a quality that you should nurture. You should look after that and you water it and you let it grow and you watch it grow into this big, beautiful, rich, full life that you're gonna have. So if you could go back in time and be asked that question again, of what you want to be when you grow up, what would you say now?